No, it's fine. Old habits die hard, huh? Captain Sawashiro! I, I thought you were in the slammer. W what are you doing here? You were found guilty. You killed the Seiryu chairman. As far as Ebbing is concerned, you're public enemy number one, right? At a glance, I'd say he's treating you like the opposite. You know, for a dumbass, you're pretty perceptive, huh, Ichi? And I see you're at it with that. Would it kill you to be nice for once? <laughs> I guess old habits really do die hard. So they do. So, uh, what exactly is going on? Well, long story short, I wasn't the one who killed Chairman Hoshino four years ago. What? Awful late to the party, aren't you? <laughs> Seems even Hoshino got sick of waiting. Young master, what have you done? Yeah, I should be asking you. The ruthless Captain Sawashiro I once knew never dragged his ass. But I have a theory. You let it slip that someone was after the old man's head. Didn't you? <sighs> if all went according to plan, Ichiban would come save the day before you made the hit. That's what you were banking on, right? Well, change of plans. I see. So you sent a guy in ahead of me to ensure the job was done. I'll make sure the credit goes to you. If it gets around that you off the Seiryu clan chairman, <laughs> well, you're sure to impress a cellmate or two. So then... That means I'd lost your trust some time ago, young master. You're wrong there, Sawashiro. You never had my trust to begin with. So someone else got to him before you even had the chance. Right. Then the young master played you as well. And even knowing that, you still took the fall. Well, I can't deny I was on my way to kill the chairman. Maybe I did pray for a sort of miracle. That by some chance I wouldn't have to. But it would have been too shameless of me to plead innocence. You had your reasons. I'm sure a lot was going through your head at the time, yeah? Uh, it's true. I suppose I was trying to atone for my sins somehow. <sighs> it was clear the young master... No. 
my own son, was only sinking deeper into the abyss. I spoiled him, and Arakawa-san's death was a direct result of that. In truth, I might have prevented it, but instead I pushed him to do it. Once they put me in prison, I thought I'd just be counting down the rest of my days. But someone put that countdown on hold. That someone was Ebina. A man claiming to be his attorney came to visit. He told me he could prove me innocent, that he wanted to appeal for a retrial. So Ebina knew the truth? Did he know about Chairman Hoshino? That there was another killer? Yeah. He's a sharp one, that guy. Real young, full of energy type. He did everything he could to get me out of prison. It was all to serve his goal. To start up the second great dissolution. You even heard it yourself just now. Arakawa still had a lot more to do before he passed. I get it. You couldn't be the one Yakuza left out of all this. <laughs> no way. I'm the guy that turned from the Tojo to the Omi, incited a war and went on an all-out rampage in the process. Get someone like me on your leash, and even a fresh face like Ebina's sure to turn a few heads. To keep the strays in line, you need someone who can bark over them. I suppose that's why he brought me in. Sounds like you got the short end of that one. I'd say it's the perfect job for me. <laughs> All things considered. If nothing else, it sure beats pretending to atone for my sins in some cell. Captain. I had asked Ebina to bring you here tonight, but it wasn't so I could talk about myself. I know I have no right, Ichi, but I have a favor to ask you. A favor? From me? It's a rush job, too. Let me hear it first. I don't exactly want to bite off more than I can chew, you know? Well, as I understand it, you're fresh out of a job, right? I'm sure you'll find the time. <sighs> so, Sawashiro asks you a favor and without any clue as to what it is, you run off and snag a passport. Sir, yes sir, eh? That's one way to put it. Well, whatever his favor is, I imagine you'll be heading overseas, right? Passport ain't good for much else. He's gonna fill me in later today. Said he'll be waiting at Heian Tower. Are you gonna be okay by yourself? I mean, can we really trust Sawashiro? You know, I think if he was gonna hurt me, he'd have done it by now. That's a fair point. Not only that, I'm out of work, with plenty of time to spare. Figured I'd just go meet him. I'd feel bad turning him down at this point, especially after he came to me for help. Guess we're all going to Heian Tower then. <laughs> You're not the only one with time on his hands after all.
Koichi's still a threat. I think there'd come a day when we'd share a meal here. I'll say. Still, I assumed it'd just be us. Actually, they're here on Ebina's orders. <laughs> I made a lot of enemies before getting arrested. Plenty of people out there still hate my guts, it seems. Oh, I did what you asked. Got my passport right here. Ah. Uh. Excellent. So, uh, what's this favor you're asking? I'm sending you to Hawaii. There's someone there who wants to meet you. Hawaii? Uh, who is it? Well, it's your mother. What? She's the one woman the boss truly loved. Akane-san. Huh? W wait that's... Just so we're clear here, yes, you are indeed the boss and Akane-san's child. That fateful day 40 years ago, I saw everything with my own eyes. On that day, two babies at the coin lockers were sadly mistaken for one another. In a perfect world, you would have been raised as Masato Arakawa, the boss's own flesh and blood. You were, of course, replaced with... <sighs> the son I abandoned. If you hate me for it, you're welcome to say so. You have every right. You know, I've always had two fathers. Jiro Kasuga at the Shangri-La Soapland, and by oath, Masumi Arakawa. For what it's worth, that's all I needed. Maybe you're right. That said, what about your mother? Right, uh, so, uh, this Akane-san lady is... Yes. She's your mom. No, but Akane-san, I, I heard she was killed. Heck, Arakawa-san told me himself. The Hikawa family hunted her down. You know, the guys Arakawa-san used to roam with. Right, well, that may be what the boss believed. But it's not entirely true. <sighs> Prior to the boss's departure, the patriarch of the Hikawa family hoped marry Arakawa-san to his daughter. That's how much he liked him. You might even say the Patriarch wanted him as his heir. But as fate would have it, the boss was already together with Akane-san. So he had to fearfully turn down the offer. Right. That was it. And the Patriarch's rage upon hearing the news was more than the boss could have ever imagined. In a sudden turn, he tried to kill both the boss and Akane-san, who at the time was pregnant with you. You see, the boss had heard Akane-san was caught by the Hikawa family, but he never saw her body for himself. He kept believing she was out there, and so he strung up one Hikawa member after another. But by then, it was too late, and the order to kill Akane-san had already been passed on to the contractors. Contractors? Professional hitmen. So now they were on the hunt too. The Hikawa Patriarch was playing all his cards. All that to kill Akane-san? 
Just her alone? Crossing the Yakuza carries a heavy toll. Surely I don't have to tell you that. Mm. It was then Arakawa made one last move. And in order to save your mom, he raided the Hikawa family HQ all by himself. Stand down! Or they'll be dead just like you! Hikawa! <laughs> That's the spirit, Arakawa. Oh, I've been wanting to see that face. To hear you scream like that little brat you are! Make the call! Do it already! <laughs> One really has to wonder, though, how bad is your bitch holding up? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
The boss continued torturing the Hikawa Patriarch until he breathed his last. But no matter what he did, the madman kept on laughing. Till the bitter end. And in the end, he never found out where Akane-san was. And now he had no chance of calling off her pursuers. But wait, he knew she was headed for the Philippines, right? There had to be something he could do. There was. He flew to the Philippines as soon as possible, and once he formed his own family, his subordinates joined the search. But nothing ever turned up, and the years just kept passing by. He came to believe that if Akane-san were alive, she would have contacted him. That day never came. So he and the rest of us assumed the worst. Though no one ever said it out loud. Here. It's the photo of Akane-san the boss had us carry around. What? I can't imagine you've seen it. This is her? Akane-san? Oh. She's native Hawaiian. Albeit with some Japanese blood mixed in. Then I have that blood too? Guess that's how it goes. Ten years had passed since Akane's son went missing. Then, one day the boss got an emergency call. It was from an officer of a Filipino group we had dealings with. He found a girl in Hawaii who looked just like her. Then that mean... maybe she moved back home at some point? Yeah, we'd been looking at that angle too, as you might have guessed. But the boss never knew where exactly in Hawaii she was born. That might be why we still came up short. So you went there to take a look? To find Akane-san? Soon as I got word, I was on the first flight out. It was just me, though. The boss stayed behind. Why? What? Why didn't he go with me? If I can afford to be blunt, it's because he was afraid. He'd had enough. A man can only have his hopes built up so many times. The stronger and more promising the lead, the bigger the hurt when it all fell through. I see. It makes sense. Anyway, off I went. <sighs> Eventually I found her. It was Akane's son, no doubt about it. And she was safe and sound? She was. About as safe as you can get. Granted, uh, that presented a bit of a problem for me. Huh? Say all went well, and she returned to the boss. Akane-san would inevitably want to meet her child. And in that case, she'd quickly see that her son's been living with a handicap since the transfer at the coin locker. Now, she might at first say that just being able to reunite is enough. But eventually, she'd want to know about his condition. And she'd probably ask how that happened. Before long, she and the boss would be comparing their memories from that night. Then it'd hit. They'd realize they transferred their baby at different lockers. How then would they treat Masato Arakawa, the young master, the boy they believed was theirs? Uh, well... No one truly knows what would have happened. But I did know this. As long as Akane-san kept out of Japan, everything here'd stay the same. Neither I nor the young master would have to suffer. Wait, then you... You flew out to Akane-san too. Exactly. When I saw Akane-san, 
I was planning to kill her. <laughs> Even I couldn't help trembling. I had every intention to get rid of the woman the boss loved. However, I ended up walking away. All thanks to something she said. If anyone asks, I've been dead a long time. And Akane-san has kids out there? It shouldn't come as a surprise if you think about it. A young girl on the run from hired killers. With absolutely no hope of contact from the man she loved. Who could blame her for anything? From then on, it was her life to live. So I decided to honor her wishes. I gave word to the boss that Akane-san was dead. I told him the Hikawa family had reached her first. That all I'd found was her lifeless body. Nothing more. The boss quietly accepted my report. The search for Akane-san was called off. And she was never spoken of again. <sighs> After that, I stayed in contact with her, though sparsely. I needed some control over her so that she wouldn't suddenly get homesick for Japan. You see, you're a certified asshole. Still, I get that this all started because of what Akane-san said. I'm not saying everything you did was wrong. Well, with the boss now dead and me out of prison, the situation has changed. I wrote a letter to Akane-san. I told her everything there was to know. How I betrayed the boss and that Ichiban Kasuga, the boy who grew up in a soap land, was her child. Ironic, isn't it? Neither I nor Akane-san were finally free until long after the boss was gone. <sighs> Anyhow, Ichi, Akane-san, she tells me she wants to meet you. She does? Me? Akane-san's home address. It's right there on the front. Is this a letter from Akane-san? It's just the envelope. The letter was to stay between me and her. I'm afraid I can't show it to you. Sure, I get that. Yeah, I'm sure it must be strange to be in your 40s and be asked to meet your mom for the first time. But Akane-san's only getting older. A son ought to set his mother's mind at ease before she passes on. Don't you think? Well, yeah. This is just one more way for me to atone for all I've done. I'll be booking your flight to Hawaii. You'll leave tomorrow night. All that's left is how you feel about it. Will you go? Not for me, but for Akane-san. Please, won't you see her? Ichi. Captain. I beg you. You know, I never thought I'd see the day you bowed your head to me. All right, I'll go see her. I would have killed you if you'd said no. What's up?
Yeah. 